Hi, this is Ali Gil. I'm here to make another video about the uh, persecution that I'm going through. Um, I'm going to direct you to go to my blog, which is called Canada Human Rights and News Exposed, The Truth is Revealed. And there I'm, I've put the latest uh, situation involving myself. So I'm going to talk a bit about what happened to me recently so right now i've been forced out of my home it's a huge conspiracy it involved the 12th division toronto police the landlord uh, barney rivers investment incorporation particularly the president salim manji and um <clears throat> the property uh property managers um Jennifer Nicole, Samantha Gibson, but it also involves um, other city officials, city officials, particularly those in the enforcement division who are supposed to enforce the tenants' rights. And for some reason, in my situation, they choose not to. I'm talking about Kathy Trapian here, and um, who is the coordinator. Uh, for the rental housing um, enforcement unit. This woman obviously is part of the conspiracy. Since the lock was changed on my door on August uh, 3rd and again on August 4th, um, she has never called the property owner to say, uh, you know, you're, you're violating um, my rights. What the Residential Tenancy Act states is that uh, they're supposed to go to the board to get an eviction order, which they never did. This conspiracy, basically, uh, is to force me to become homeless. It's a tactic that's used by the Canadian police and the intelligence agency CSIS against myself over the years. And it's, uh, it's something that's worked for them in the past, and they, they have no need to change their tactic against me. It's part of the cruel, uh, cruel and unusual degrading treatment that this government want to subject me to, and it's just it's just an ongoing situation. So I'm making this video uh, because people don't understand that Canada carry out human rights abuse against certain people, certain individuals, like myself. Okay, um, I get a lot of questions about why this is happening. Well, since I started my blog uh, a number of years ago, more than 10 years ago, I've been subjected to these kinds of treatments uh, by the Canadian government. And it does this secretly. So what it also does is to block my efforts uh, in getting international aid um, to help my situation, okay? So, on August 3rd, um, I came home. I had just taken over the lease from my apartment on the section um, 100 and section 104, subsection 4 of the Residential Tenancies Act because the original lease holder moved out and um, these people knew that I've been living there. And um, under the act, they're required to take action 60 days after knowing that I'm there. And they did not do that. So after the 60 days, it is deemed that they agree with the lease uh, has been assigned to me. So when that happened, I paid them my rent um, and took over the lease. And within 24 hours... Uh, they changed the lock on the door and so forced me to become homeless. What they're doing is completely illegal, okay? Completely illegal. Um, those who are not familiar with Canadian law, the Residential Tenancies Act, basically, it's 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 a, it's a law. It's, it, it's like in any other country. It's, it's an act. It, it, it's, it was enacted by Parliament. And I'm not even going to get into the semantics of this, but it's, it's an act, it's the law. And any act um, in Canada 
is enforceable, right? You, you can be charged for it if you break it. Um, so they can be prosecuted for it under the criminal code. But then can, there's also other recourses that I can take as well. And I have a problem with the president of Barney Rivers Incorporated, who is Salim Manji. And the problem I'm having is that he's on the board. He's on a number of public boards um, in Canada, in Ontario, particularly Toronto. And so you here you have this individual who is on these public boards, and these people are supposed to be of moral standing, okay? Particularly when it comes to the law. And here you have this guy breaking the law, openly flaunting what he's doing. And he still want to sit on the board, this public board, and represent the public interest. So one of the ways that I've gone after him is to, um, through, through the boards, okay, to let them know that he's not um, doing, he's not abiding by the law. He's disobeying the law. And do they really want someone like that to be sitting on a public board? So that's one of the recourse that I've taken. The other problem I'm having is with his counsel, who happened to be a paralegal by the name of David Rubin of D&D Associates in Toronto. Actually, it's located just north of Toronto in a little town, uh, Concord, I believe. Um, and right now, he's on the investigation by the Law Society because I contacted them about him. Now, you want to tell me, I have met a lot of bad paralegals in the past, but this one really, really uh, shows them all up, okay? You want to tell me that you are a paralegal and you cannot convince your client that what he's doing is against the law. A paralegal is not supposed to do anything that's going to look bad, uh, regarding the law society or he's not supposed to um, there's a code of conduct that they're supposed to live by and so one of one of those rules is that he's not supposed to interfere with the administration of justice and what David Rubin who is what part of the conspiracy here he's one of the conspirators what he has done is to sit by and let his client break the law um, so he's on the investigation by the Law Society. I heard back from the Law Society on September 1st, uh, two days ago, um, in regards to my complaint against him. As I said, I've met other paralegals previously, and they're very, some of them are not nice, okay? Um, but the ones that I've met, even though they act corrupt and things like that, they do their part, they do their due diligence, their duty and their due diligence to say to their client, look, this is what the law says, this is what you should do. And then, um, in, in, in my experiences with them, then they would act corrupt outside of that. But at least they explain to them that this is what the law says, this is what you're supposed to do. David Rubin did not do that. What he did was to assist his client to be dishonest and to act outside of the law, which he's not allowed to do as a paralegal. So I'm glad that I took that route to um, have the Law Society investigate him. Okay. The other thing that I did was to contact, make an urgent appeal to the special uh, rapporteur with the United Nations uh, on an urgent basis because this is a part of this is basically torture psychological torture because they know my situation is that i don't have family and friends so when they force me out of my home they're basically forcing me to live on the street or forcing me to be homeless they took it one step further and i've made an article on my blog in regards to this a woman um who's actually a client of mine because i i do here as well I do hear braiding, so she's a client of mine and she decided to assist me. And so what 
they did was to go to her home and to tell her that she need to get rid of me because I'm a bad person. I'm going to hurt her. And there's been a lot of malicious rumor, not just to her, but to other people in the apartment building where she's living and cause a lot of trouble for her and including talking to the management of the building. Um, and Samantha Gibson, who is a property manager uh, in, the, in the apartment building where I'm living, where I was living, that she illegally changed the lock, gave my animals to neighbors in the building. She did a lot of things wrong. But, I mean, she did a lot of illegal things in this case. Um, and she's going to pay for that, you know, but it's the law is going to catch up to her eventually. Um, and so she took herself down there, spoke with the property management, spoke, tried to, tried to engage this woman in conversation of uh, why she should not have me in her home, and basically to put me out on the street. So she and the police were not satisfied that they changed the lock illegally on my door. They really, really wanted to see me on the street just to show you how far they want to go with this persecution. And this woman is still holding on to the keys to my apartment because she's if she changed the lock, she's supposed to provide me with the replacement keys and she hasn't done that. And she's been backed by Salim Manji, who's the president of Barney Rivers. And he's getting his, his advice from the corrupt paralegal David Rubin, who is now on investigation by the Law Society. So you can see that there's a lot of corruption going on in regards to this thing. Sorry, I'm inside and it's it's the law that you have to wear your mask uh, when you're indoors in a public place. So I'm making this very brief video to let um, the public know that the persecution that I'm going through, it's still continued, and these people are not stopping. I mean, they will, they have in the past, and they continue to block my efforts in getting international aid, in getting international assistance. Okay, they sabotage my life, uh, not just in in uh, assassinating my character with people who may want to try to assist me. On a personal level but they try to do that outside of this country as well and they've been doing that for years and years and years so this video is to go along with the articles that I've made on my blog in regards to this latest situation where they are not budging they I mean they're supposed to this this landlord which is a company really uh, but it's representative, it's agents. They're supposed to go to the board and apply for an eviction order. It's, it says very clearly, and I posted that on my blog. So you can see that I'm not just saying these things. This is the law, which is that no landlord has the authority to change the lock on any tenant. Okay, If they want uh, a tenant or an occupant, because they're not viewing you as a tenant, they're viewing you as an occupant, irregardless, it says occupant or tenant you're not allowed to do that you're supposed to go to the board and to get an eviction order if you want to evict someone okay they are very brazen and the only reason why they're that brazen to change my lock illegally is if the authorities are backing them one of the persons who, who is backing them is um in the enforcement division of the rental uh Housing Tribunal Enforcement Unit, Kathy Chapanier, and her boss, um, Alicia Cates. And I wrote about both of them on my blog. Kathy Chapanier is directly responsible for me being homeless right now. Had she enforced the uh, Residential Tenancies uh, Act in this case, where they, she normally she and her agents or, or um, the people in the enforcement unit normally call the landlord and say, look, this is what the act says. You're supposed to go to the board and get an order. You're not allowed to change the lock illegally. You need to uh, fix the situation, give her back the keys, and then go and apply. 
she's so freaking stupid she's like oh well maybe they're working on an application now to evict you before the board well what how, how the hell is that gonna work the board doesn't see it that way they cannot be working on an application now before the board which she's alleging i don't know if it's true it's not true anyways but I mean, these people are supposed to be so educated and then they said all of these stupid things out of their mouth. They can't do that. And the reason why they can't do that is that they already carried out an Ill illegal eviction. Okay? The only way they can do that is to give the replacement keys, let me back into my unit, then go to the board and do that. Well, they can't do both. They can't carry out an illegal eviction and then do an application to get an eviction. Okay? So I don't know what Kathy Chapiani is, is talking. is complete bullshit. And also, in my conversation with her, uh, she suggested that my former roommate, who moved out, which is how I'm able to take over the apartment, um, must contact her. And, like, the law doesn't say that. I mean, she could be living in Siberia for all the law is concerned. She's done. She can't, legally, she cannot get back into this place. Um, it's done with her. Okay, it's done. I'm the new tenant now. The lease was assigned to me and they need to accept that. And if they don't accept that, then the recourse that the law gives them is to go to the board and say, look, um, we want to evict her and they're going to have to have some damn good reason. Even if they want to use the grounds that they're using, which is that she's not qualified to be a tenant, whatever the case is, go and make your case there at the board, but don't. Uh, take the law into your own hands and do what the board is supposed to do, or, you know. And so they're doing this, obviously, with the backing of the police, okay? And they know what, that what they're doing is illegal, and they're holding on to the keys, and they're not letting me get back into my home. So it is really creating a hardship for me, because not only are they have they done that, they're also... Uh, taking it upon themselves to make sure that no one else will assist me in this case, okay? And Samantha Gibson is facing mischief charges and uh, all kind of things, um, you know. And I mentioned in the article that what she did was to go down to the place and uh, try to malign my character and turn people against me and say, don't have her here. So you can see that they took it one step further, okay? Um, I don't know what to say at this point anymore regarding my situation in regards to the persecution that I'm going through um, because I've made so many countless videos and so many people are aware of it and because of the good um, job that this government has done against me